through antiquity, all the way down to the Greeks. The Greeks did planning. This is where their temples would go. If you ever go visit into the ruins, this is where the temples are. This is where the marketplace are. This is where the rich folks live. This is where the poor folks live. Uh, the Romans copied that. Middle Ages with the, with the castles and everything. If you lived outside the castles, that's where you, the tanneries were, all the other the, the uses that were um, unwanted in the city. If you were on the other side of the walls, next to the king, you were rich people, you were uh, set up right. So the zoning is ancient, and the zoning regulations have been around for a long time. In 1926, um, the, the uh, Amber Realty sued the, the village of Euclid uh, because they wanted to have a rezoning of uh, industrial use. The, uh, this case went all the way up to the Supreme Court, and it's a famous landmark case. And in this case, the Supreme Court decided that a municipality can use police power to enforce zoning. So that means that the city can use Keep pointing this way, but you can. you can use zoning as a police power to regulate land use. And another thing that it was in the uh, in the case was that as long as, long as it's done for the health, safety, and the general welfare of the citizens, you can do it. And sometimes you can still, I mean, you do see that in every ordinance that you've seen in your packet. They'll say. This is for the health, safety, and, we and general welfare of the citizens of Tavares. That's where it comes from, from 1926. Uh, we were doing zoning before then. Now, flash forward to So, zoning is the most general use of regular land use in the common uh, developed world. There are some differences in some places else, but zoning is, is the most common. There's also uh, form-based zoning, but it's, it's very rare, but pretty much zoning is the most common and most um, time-proven. Flash forward to 1985. I graduated high school. I enlisted in the Army. I went to, I got shipped overseas to Germany. <laughs> But in 1985, the Growth Management Act happened. And in the Growth Management Act, it required all the cities in Florida to adopt a comprehensive plan. So now they, what happened was something got introduced that was different, which is comprehensive planning. And comprehensive planning, they call it future land use. And it's, and it's, and it's, it is something that's imposed by the state, not by um, the cities. So the home rule, some people call home rule, kind of went away. You have the state mandating that you're supposed to look into your facilities, you're supposed to look into your uh, recreational fields, how much you have, um, if schools, if schools were available. And this had a lot of uh, strong reactions for like small towns, because a lot of small towns you had maybe uh, the clerk and you had uh, the city administrator. So you didn't have people to do these, uh, to do a comprehensive plan and get it adopted to uh, Tallahassee. So it took years to really get a lot of uh, the cities on board for this, uh, to have comprehensive plans. But they were, with this 1985 Growth, Growth Management Act, they shut the cities down. They couldn't do any more rezonings unless you adopted a future land use map. Future land use map was dealing more with densities and it was dealing more with, um, in general, it was like a general use, like an umbrella use of what was capable to happen on those, uh, um, on the land. So, what happened? There was a lot of pushback later on. Uh, a lot of cities were saying, you know, when we were doing like small scales, we were limited to how many times we could take them to, to Tallahassee, ship them to Tallahassee. We were required to only do it like twice a year. Um, the state would look at them uh, very good. They would make comments on them and uh, it would make it very hard for the cities to change 
uh, the comprehensive plan. Uh, so, you know, so that was there was a lot of pushback from the cities, and a lot of um, the politics changed over time. That in 2011, it kind of changed to the uh, Community Planning Act changed it to only they're only going to be looking at state uh, requirements. So if it affects the state, then they'll make a comment. But everything is still in place. We can, uh, we can do small scales a lot quicker. We can just load them up in, into the website and finish a small scale quicker. Um, the, the State Department um, you know, went around and they have different uh, departments that it was under because it's almost, almost like a department that nobody wanted. So it was started with DCA, then it went to DEO, then it went to uh, Department of Commerce. That's where it's at now. This is the community planning, the Bureau of Community Planning. Can we have the, uh, the next slide, please? Next, next slide. Right. Thank you. This right here is uh, table 8 3. And Consistent with it. Because it, it, there's so much county 
the property intermingled with us, and that's why if they develop it, does it have to work with ours or as long as it works with them? It doesn't, not particularly. We have home room, so we can, let's say it, it doesn't, uh, let's say if, it's, if they're asking uh, a future land use, which is common, let's say, for example, they're saying that the, their land use designation is industrial, but a developer comes in here and they're saying they want to do residential. We can consider that, and the city council, I think, is purview that they can annex and have its own residential. I think that is within the legal boundaries of, uh, of the city. Well, but I'm not an attorney. Right. <laughs> but I mean, I know they have to put the council if they're going to use our water and our sewer, then they have to be annexed into the city. Yes. That's the only thing that would bring them in here. That's the only thing that concerns that there's still property out there that is still in the county. Can they do anything? Well, they can't do anything because they have to need our water and our sewer and they need council approval. Yes, so that's, that's right. That's the only caveat we have. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the keys. The water, sewer, transportation, um, you know, when we bring projects up, we, we really, uh, there's, we, they really go through a lot of uh, requirements that we ask for. Um, the application has a table of all the things that we require, and there's an environmental study, transportation study, there's, there's a whole bunch of studies that they have to do and provide to us. Um, there's concurrency issues that if the transportation is not there, and they're um, in the uh, street light, it's not functioning, and the traffic study shows that, well, they have to contribute to that traffic light uh, to fix it, to re get it re-signalized, or, or increase the turn lane. So all those things happen at, a, uh, uh, at the application level for development. But if they were to, if they were to put an application into the county of their property that's in the city, does that auto, do they automatically kick it back to the city? Because they need our water and sewer and everything else? Or yes. They yeah, it, typically they, they go to the county and if they see that our lines are close by, they, they'll kick it to us. Yep. Antonio, I've noticed in several cities in Lake County no longer have so many classifications at all, restricted using the land use designations to do all their development. Have we, have we ever considered doing that? Or is there any advantage? Um, I, I, I am familiar with that. I would not recommend that because every every single time you're going to do a land use change, you're going to have to deal with Tallahassee. Okay. <laughs> At least this we can do a little, some rezoning or something right in, right in the city, home rural, gotcha. um, city council members, PNC members. You guys know more of what's going on than somebody reviewing something at, at Tallahassee. That's usually the sentiment I get back, and um, most people feel that way. <laughs> but uh, let's, let's move on because we got a presentation by uh, Ms. Terry O'Neill. She uh, recently got promoted to deputy uh, director, so just in case I die or anything, she can come <laughs> and uh, the city will continue smoothly. Nobody ever knows how bad. But uh, she has that, she's going to touch uh, uh, the Live Local Act, uh, which is brand new. Uh, a lot of questions have been about it, so uh, they get a win, Terry. Thank Okay, so I'm Terry O'Neill. Um, I work in community development, and I'm going to give you a short presentation on the Live Local Act today. So what happened to affordable housing? Um, if you live in Lake County or have just moved here, you know that rent renting has changed in the last 20 years. It's way more expensive. Um, it's almost impossible for the workforce to live in close proximity to where they work. Um, so um, cities and counties are not allowed to have rent controls. The state of Florida prohibits that. So they have come up with a solution, and that solution is called the Live Local Act, or SB 102. It was approved last year on March 29th, 2023, and 
and that's going to help combat some of the housing issues that we have and allow for some affordable housing. Next slide. So what is affordable? I look at this picture and I want to think this is affordable, <laughs> but this is not a reality. It's not a reality. Um, so what is affordable? According to the state of Florida, affordable means that monthly rents or monthly mortgage payments, including taxes, insurance, and utilities, do not exceed 30% of that amount, which represents the percentage of the median adjusted gross annual income for the households as indicated in subsection 9 for extremely low income persons, subsection 11 for low income persons, subsection 12 moderate income persons, or for subsection 17. So today I'm going to highlight two of those of which are going to be the low income or the moderate income person. Um, but first we're going to take a look at what the Florida Housing Finance Corporation deems as a median income for Lake County. Does anybody know what the median income for Lake County is? <laughs> okay, next slide. So um, on this chart, under Lake County, um, in the far left the little box down at the bottom, it says that the median income for Lake County is $90,400. industrial and mixed use 
as long as 40% of the residential units proposed in the multifamily um, rental development are affordable for at least 30 years. The next use projects would require 65% of the total square footage to be used for residential projects because the next use um, project would also allow for commercial. So density. Um, density for the Legal Act um, says that a municipality may not restrict the density of a proposed development authorized under the subsection below, the highest allowed density for any on any land in the municipality where residential development is allowed. So whatever our highest density is allowed, that's what we have to allow for, for the local. Next slide. Um, so for building heights, building heights, it says a municipality may not restrict the height of a proposed development of a proposed development authorized under the subsection below. The highest currently allowed height for a commercial or residential development located in the jurisdiction within one mile of the proposed development or three stories, whichever is higher. Next slide. So this map here, it shows um, city properties throughout the city. Um, the Live Local Act requires that cities do an inventory of their surplus land to see if there is a place that the city could allow for affordable housing. Um, this map shows the inventory for the city and that the city of Tiberias does not have any city-owned land available for affordable housing. So what does this all mean for the city of Tiberias? So if, a, if a developer chooses to use the Live Local option, they do not have to go before any board. They are allowed to submit for their development um, for plan review and approval. Um, the Live Local Act will allow them to receive an approval without, before, without going before any board. Make a, make, make a announcement. 
and that's information that would be available to the planning and zoning board, the council, and there can be reports on it. It's just the mechanism with, you're not part of the process via the state live local, the planning and zoning or the city council, but certainly that you're, you're privy to that information or to ask for updates or to receive that report. So that would just the, the listing is what properties might be owned, for example, surplus. The, let's say there was a commercial um, lot that the city came to own, and that could be available, and someone wants to offer to purchase that surplus property, then they could use Live Local to develop it. Um, but that's there's no currently available. I think. No, no, so 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 they show that there's no yes. public available for that. They was all new stuff for water retention or, you know, it was parkland and conservation. So those uh, monthly rents that you were showing, how does that relate to what rents the developers are charged? Uh, can it be that amount and anything below it? It has to be affordable. So, um, two of the other um, affordable um, housing terms were very low and extremely low. And those are lower than the 2712 and the 1800. Mm -hmm. So they would have to figure out what affordable is for their development. But they, okay, let's just say that they designated, say, you know, low income, $1,800 a month, including your utility. Does that mean they can charge that or can anything below that if they want? Or that's like a ceiling. That's counts kind of price tag. Okay, so if they want to put some kind of crap up that they can rent out for five hundred dollars a month, they could do that if they think it's feasible. Right? They're market driven, they're still allowed to do that, yes, correct. But the local acts um, as a it prohibits, there's a cap. I mean, I, I wouldn't think, based on just kind of commercial principles, that that would happen, but... but um, they can pause. Sure. Okay. Because aren't they getting some kind of subsidies from the state for low-interest loans and all their sales tax breaks and everything else? That I'm not certain of. Um, Mr. Fair saying yes. Um, there, there certainly is, and you that they have to have the 30 years of the um, reduced available, the affordable housing. This whole, you need to be down here. You're an active participant. This way, people don't have to be turned on police. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> My neck hurts. <laughs> okay, so the next slide is um, upcoming. <laughs>
city were to have property become available that we were able to use for this. I mean, how do you determine what the, uh, the fair market value is that the developer would have to pay for that? And we would have to list it on our website according to the app. Yeah, just, yeah, this is just another example of, you know, how it has to take away yeah. more of our own yeah. Yeah. I mean, this past, Absolutely. I think it was near unanimous, I think. Was Can you uh, use the microphones, one, please? One, uh, one vote against it, that's about it. Wow. Really? Wow. Yeah. So, as the city is a whole sits today, how much zone land have we allotted for the future development that has not yet been developed? I have not calculated that, but I can, um, we can do that in the same way you want to know what that is. I don't know that in broad Because my next question is, after a certain point in time, could we not take away that designation, say after five years or three years or whatever, and bring it back to rezoning and make it more no, we can't, we can't. open it up to whatever needs are out there that is it sits, it looks like, or where I live, we just had Neil Fisher, who's been gone for 20 years, finally developed something that 32 houses where I'm at. The infrastructure went in 25 years ago before I moved here, and now nothing was tested or anything, and the people are having issues with their homes. Is there, is, is there something that we can do to better control or better manage what's going on. Can say if somebody comes to P and Z and then city council, can we say, okay, we will issue this permit, but you have three years to show it, promise on it, or it reverts back and you go through the process again. Well, I can answer that. Um, the PDs, the plan developments, do have a sunset provision in the PD. So uh, typically, I believe it's either three years or two years for them to perform. If not, the city's in the driver's seat that they can revert. We can revert it back to the highest residential uh, zoning district. Um, and but this is a good transition of your questions. Your questions are good. For our next segment? Uh, yes, so the next segment, if you go to the next slide, will be Antonio talking about current development. Yeah, you got to, then we can point on the map, because a lot of these things are so visual, it's like you're talking about here, well, where are we at? So let's, uh, what do you want to start off first? You want to start off with a commercial, or you want to start off with residential? Leave it, leave it up to you. It's a workshop. So it's a <laughs> residential. Residential. All right. Let's we'll start off with residential. Mostly from uh, 
one of the last meetings we had with the city council, uh, one of the council members, um, Lori Fister, mentioned what happens about those dwelling units that were approved years and years ago. There's two, dwell there's two big sites that you guys are concerned about. Uh, the, the development project that's right behind Royal Harbor, that was a land use, uh, it's, a, it's in the comprehensive plan that the maximum is no more than 999 dwelling units. The PD that came with it has expired, what we were just talking about, it's sunsetted, so it has no zoning right now. The people that have come in to talk to about this project, don't see 999, they cannot make 999 units. Uh, they're looking, um, you know, I mean, their numbers range, you know, from 400 to 300, because they want to have some type of buffer because of the uh, gun club that's right next door. Mm -hmm. So they want to have some type of buffer, like uh, some type of industrial uh, office warehouse deal with a lot of landscaping to buffer out the noise. So the vision of 999 units uh, it's highly unlikely, and I do say that on another on record. Um, the the other one that and that was way back in 2003 when that happened. The other one is the an old one is the uh, Lakeside mixed use. That one is mostly wetlands. If you look, and there's a lot of wetlands in there, and they topped it off at 2,500 again. Comprehensive plan, comprehensive planning. They never issued a zoning for it. Uh, it's supposed to, there's the, uh, the policies for it is all in our comprehensive plan. Uh, and again, uh, when I sat down and I looked at how much uplands that, that area has, I came up to less than 500 units that we can probably put in there. That, it's not going to be 2,500. I, I, I don't know what happened, what was going on. However, the yellow and the red, the under, under development review and under construction right now, those are those are viable things that are happening right now that are under construction or under review. Um, and I also have the build outs at that uh, recent build out. Uh, the, the oldest one here is probably Outwater Phase One, and Miranda Park is probably the oldest ones here. But uh, I didn't count them. What I counted was under review and under construction, you're looking at a little bit over 3,000 units coming online in the near future. Um, but this is, a, this is growth. This is how it's going. Um, this is, uh, this is a, a snapshot of what's happening right now. Um, it's, it's not biased. It's, it is what it is. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're pro-growth. Or, 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 or against growth. This is what it is. So we have to plan. We have to plan accordingly. Uh, and, uh, and we are doing our best effort to plan accordingly. Uh, if we do get a Live Local Act project, we can put it in here and mark it. This is a Live Local, uh, Live Local Act project that came in on board. Any questions on any of the developments? Uh, How long is a zone change good for? Zoning change, uh, zoning is good forever, forever. Zoning is good forever. A PD is typically have some type of uh, sunset provision on it. So when it says expired PD, no zoning? No zoning, because it's, it's expired, the PD is expired. But yet in that area, there's still some property that's for sale, correct? On, on the uh, Lake Harris Grove? Yes. There's a, that's the Loma Linda property. They, they come once in a while to start talking. Uh, they're, they're, the biggest challenge is access to the site because they're going to have to go. I was just going to say, because that Frankie Road or whatever it is, it doesn't go all the way to No, and they have to, uh, they have to improve all of it to city standards to make it, to make it happen. Mm -hmm. So that's the biggest challenge uh, you know, that they have right now. So once they get into this under development review, that can go on for? Yeah, it, it really depends on how hot they are to, to develop. Some developers, you know, they want everything developed in May, you know, tomorrow. Some of them just uh, have uh, their own timetable. It takes, takes them a long time to develop. Uh, 
Yeah, because I mean, some of these, you go by the properties and you see for sale signs for the land still up. And it's like, are they bailing? Is it? Yeah, that, that's a typical tactic that I noticed through the years that they'll leave the, the, the for sale sign. And uh, they're just, uh, I don't know why they do that, but uh, you know, and I ask them, I ask them sometimes, I go, why do you still have the for sale sign? Well, you never know. It's <laughs> social advertisement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They all say car wash. Same sound. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, do you have this? You, you have the, uh, do you have any questions on any development? Just uh, shoot me a line. Uh, if you want it on a PDF, I can send you a PDF on it. Yes. And update it. Are ready for commercial? Yes. Is 
state probation has moved on to uh, Woodley Road. Yeah. Into one of the county buildings. Oh, oh yeah. did it? Uh -huh. Yeah. Surprise. They've been down there six, eight months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they can do whatever they want in their existing building. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. 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 We can, we can all agree to this, right? The right development and the right location. Right. High density in the downtown area, right? Yeah. Density, because that's where you want intensity mm -hmm. and density to be. Um, apartments, well, how do you feel about apartments now you got all this work? Do you still? Yeah, we need those. You need, we need apartments. Yes, yeah, we do. Off of 19? Well, mm -hmm. nobody seems to want them off of 19. Mm -hmm. want commercial. It's the only, only real good area you have for development is 19. It's 19. But then you have a traffic problem there that the county is not willing to face. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's our problem is no matter what the council would like to do, yeah. we have a problem with traffic out there. Mm -hmm. yes. And it's getting worse. Yes. And, and that's what stops some of the people. Right now it's probably the best it's going to be. Yeah. Right now. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Right. I mean, some of this, I mean, when we were looking at the property um, right out by Idemir and yes. yeah. Yeah. it seems like we've looked at that like two or three times. Yes. And, and yeah, and so it's like if we want 19 to be a commercial order, I mean, somewhere along the line, that should be communicated to the developers that are coming in here saying, we're not going to do apartments there. We're going to have to do them off 19 or do them somewhere else. Because it seems like we look at that, they want a big commercial building there, but they also want to put apartments, which was the last one we looked at. Mm -hmm. You know, the first one we looked at was all apartments, I think. Yes, it was yeah, all apartments. Yes, sure. and, and I think, the time before that, it was approved for residential. So, I mean, I guess somewhere along the line, who communicates that? Who makes those decisions that we'd really like to see 19 as a last time the gentleman had to, because of the city council, add a commercial entity on component to the apartments. And, right. and many of the people on the planning zone board said no. Right. But they have, we have, don't have a lot of space anywhere else to put all the apartment complexes that we need. Well, I mean, it seems like we have a lot of them that supposedly are under development review that I don't see anything happening. Um, yeah. I got communi I communicated with uh, Tavares Manor, the one that we did the high variance, because yes. mm -hmm. they, there's been like crickets for the longest of time. Yes. He did communicate back with me, and he told me he is processing, he is progressing with the apartments, he is going forward. I'm like, okay, well, great, bring it in. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because, you know, it's like the ones out on 441 on, on Saunders Lake and mm -hmm. on Caroline, and yeah. it just seems like we've had a lot of them that you're showing as under development review, and it's been how many years since we've been those? Well, two, two. at least two. Yeah, and it's like, so, you know, we talk about affordable housing, we talk about apartments, and then we turn around and say on 19, we want a commercial, mm -hmm. uh, you know, corridor there. And I, and I get it, but it's like, so, I know you, you can't push them. No, I, 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 can, only say, I can only suggest to them. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't know how much it changes from the time it, the, the ordinance and the, I and the plan it. use is, is approved to when somebody finally lands on what they want to do. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's where it just seems like, what the heck? It's funny, well, it's frustrating. Look, put yourself in my shoes. It's frustrating for me. I would go through approving whole sets of plans 
you know, that they're, they, they're just on top of you, oh, I gotta get this approved, we gotta get this approved, what's wrong, what are you guys, you know, getting a whole bunch of complaints, we put them in the shelf, it's approved, come pick them up. So, um, uh, 19, August, everything zoned commercial? No, no, it's not. And that's what I was going to get at. How about more north of 19, past the car wash, more central, more, is that an area that apartments, do you can envision apartments? At 15 acres across the East Hartford, we do Yes, very good. Something okay. like that. And that 15 acres is a
Oh, there they are. Yeah, I got them. Right in the center of the town homes. How many of them? Oh, very square. 72. 72. Does anything happen with that? Yeah. It's very square. Anything happening with that? It's very square. I think you're, yes. It's under contract. Antonio, would you like me to, would you like me to provide a brief update on that? Sure. Yes. Yes. We'll be happy to. Thank you. Starbucks. Since you're here. So it's a very square, as you may recall, um, there was a request for proposals put out about two years, well, a couple of times, several rounds over the last nine years since we've owned the property. Um, and uh, last year, we went out and had a successful recruitment. Um, and uh, the uh, proposal was awarded to Kagan Management. And uh, we have uh, negotiated a contract. Uh, Can you use the microphone, please? Sale use the microphone. Of the microphone? Thank you, Vince. Um, so, a purchase and sale agreement has been executed. They are in their due diligence period. They have uh, up to six months. I don't think it's going to take that long for them to complete the due diligence. So, well on their way. Uh, so, we expect a closing date on the property in uh, probably the next two months or so. Uh, once they close, then they will be submitting plans. And of course, it's a mixed use development apartments with uh, about 11 to 12,000 square feet of commercial space on the ground floor and then two to three stories of, uh, of uh, higher end uh, market rate luxury apartments, uh, rental units. So, uh, you know, they're, they're very excited about it and really, really uh, getting into the design uh, phase right now as they uh, go through the due diligence and closing process. So, uh, you know, we expect hopefully within about the next year or so, uh, we'll actually start to see some construction activity over there and uh, get on with that project. So that's why a long time coming and a great... Uh, why are there, with the exception of fast food places coming into the areas, why can't we get some big commercial properties coming in? Is there something like So when you say commercial properties, um, Establishment. Establishment. So it's, um, you know, it's challenging in that, in, in terms of, and you're talking about along the, the, the bypass quarters, the 441 and 19 quarters, I assume. And you're talking about national brands for the most part along those types of, of roadways, right? And we've had some, uh, one of the stumbling blocks that, that exists are, um, you know, they, those, those developments, those, the, 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 those chains, those franchises have very specific formulas of what they're looking for in terms of demographics, rooftops, you know, pop, daytime population, point, traffic flow is a huge one. Uh, 441 meets uh, certainly all the traffic flow criteria for all of them and a portion of 19 from uh, the uh, 561 uh, interchange there northward meets the bare minimum. Uh, we're, we're shying a few areas. Um, median income is one of them. Uh, development within, they have these 5, 10, 15 miles range. Well, one of the things we, we benefit from greatly, but it, it, it challenges us a bit, is uh, those lakes, right? They're not developable. Uh, and so they look in those areas and you go out five miles, which is what, where they really concentrate, um, you know, the, the current and future uh, uh, housing development potentials, rooftops, residents, customers for their, uh, you know, for the future. Um, and uh, that, that, that poses some challenges for us because, because of the, the layout of the lakes around us. But, you know, we also benefit a lot from, from those. So it's, it's moving. I'd like to see it a little faster. Um, as you know, it, it's it's one of those things where um, it, it's sort of a chicken and egg thing. You know, you have one before the other, uh, kind of a balanced uh, balanced uh, um, approach towards residential growth uh, to support these businesses and uh, you know sufficient amenities to attract. Right. So um, it's you know it's it's moving along pretty well. Um, 
I think we're going to be doing some things this, this next year that's going to accelerate a lot of that. But uh, we'll see. We'll talk about the budgeting process here coming up.